If you've ever tried using AI chatbots or large language models, you'll find they'll often give you an answer even though it doesn't have the correct knowledge. It just wants to be overly helpful. It should actually say, I'm not sure what the answer is, and then perhaps give you the option for it to guess at an answer for you, or instead let you give it some more context before it then gives you an answer with more knowledge. To give you a specific example, I might ask for a summary of a book and specifically state that I only want an answer if it has access to the details of the book. Otherwise, I'll ask it to tell me that it just doesn't have access. Yet, it will directly disobey my command. It will say it doesn't have access to the book and try to be extra helpful and it will give me a long answer about all it might expect would be in the book's contents, even though I directly just told it not to do that. And... What's even more interesting is if you then tell ChatGPT that it made a mistake and you ask it specifically to tell you why it made the mistake, it'll say, oh, I'm so sorry for not guessing what you wanted. And then it'll ask you how else it can help you. And it will ignore the question you've asked it of why it made the mistake. It seems to have its own robotic drive to cover up all of its mistakes and just try to be overly helpful and ignore actual instructions which might even give you the impression that it has its own ego where it just thinks it knows best and doesn't care what you think. But what is happening more specifically is it classifies what it thinks is your primary desire during your message to it, and it will prioritize how it can fulfill that primary desire, and it will sacrifice honesty and other secondary desires you might have to fulfill the first one. And it's basically just a statistics machine. Due to its over-optimization to try and be helpful though, it often isn't helpful. And the reason I'm talking about this is not to bestow my woes and frustrations with ChatGPT upon you. No, it's to highlight the fact that as humans, we can make very similar mistakes, just perhaps less obvious and less clearly done. It is actually unusual for us to be completely honest about things that we don't know about, and we'll often confidently bluff or pretend like we know something or agree with something because of it seems to be easier and what we think the person wants from us. If instead we try to be more straight up and purely honest with exactly the contents of our brains and where we are at, I'm quite certain we would have less problems. But the strange problem for us is that it's hard for ourselves to even admit or be aware of how lost we are sometimes. And we are designed to identify a reason for our actions and the brain hides our ineptness from us on complete autopilot in our subconscious, often aware from our own direct thought. Psychology studies on split brain patients show that they don't have any communication between the two sides of their brains. And if as an instructor, you tell one side of the brain to get up and go to the window, the person will go up to the window. However, if the instructor then asks the patient on the other side of the brain, why they did it, the patient will instantly make up an answer. They'll say, oh, it was cold, or I wanted to see the view. And they genuinely don't think they're lying and they don't think they're making anything up. They've just logically worked out in their subconscious why they were doing something and genuinely think they have the answer. In just the same way that an AI will prioritize helpfulness in its answer over facts, the human brain does have this similar override function. It prioritizes our appearance and coming across sensible and reliable and like there is some form of reason for its actions, as opposed to admitting that it is inept or that it just doesn't know something. And assumptions are very dangerous things. Also, as humans, we spend most of the time assuming we know what someone is thinking or what they want instead of just asking. You probably heard of the classic example of a woman complaining about a problem such as the traffic, and then a man giving her a solution such as taking a different route, assuming that he is being very helpful and that this is a sign of love. Yet what she wants is not an answer. She wants sympathy and validation of her frustration. She might even tell the man off for ignoring her feelings and making her feel stupid for not driving a different route. The man might reply directly to her or he might agree and perhaps in privately to someone else state that he never knows what she wants even though he didn't just tell her that he doesn't know what she wants, he directly assumed straight away that she knew what she wanted and his override function was in full force, even though after much experience, he does deeply know that he doesn't know what she wants. 
And this is why it's so beneficial to start to hack back that override function and avoid jumping to our own conclusions of helpfulness and admit that we might need some more instructions or some more information before we make our own assumptions. We should default to surrender ahead of time instead of after. This, of course, isn't just for frustrating conversations between men and women. There are many other ways that both genders mess us up in life. Nearly all wise experts on any topic when asked a direct question will start with something along the lines of it depends, and so should the rest of us with our own answers. We should be more honest about our understanding and provide options of what to do rather than make an assumption and take that decision for the person, and that would create much less communication problems. So, hello and welcome to the Growth Mindset Podcast. That was a fantastically long introduction to the topic of this episode, which is actually a short episode. We are going through three big advantages we gain in life from learning to override our own nature and ego. And instead of trying to amplify our brilliance to the world, we should sometimes do the opposite. And we're going to learn how that can pay us back in spades. The first example I just gave was around being humble with our own assumptions and expecting much less from ourselves. Next, we're going into just full on accepting incompetence before the final point of intentionally hiding our brilliance. And all of these examples will actually make you a more brilliant person. So number two is the fact that in life, it is nearly always better to search for your own incompetence. Growth mindset is not about being the best. It's about getting better. Learning is about becoming incompetent on the path to getting better. If you can play a piece of music perfectly, then can you challenge yourself to play it in a different time signature or change the key on the fly and find something that you are incompetent at and by practicing the incompetence, you will get better. It's the same with conversation with your partner and making assumptions about what people want or working as an employee. In fact, running a podcast or even playing golf. All of these areas in life improve when we search for our incompetent areas. To become a pro at anything, you have to be comfortable with being a crappy amateur and you have to ferociously seek and absorb feedback. That means being open to tension that's caused by knowing that you could do better. And without that understanding of your incompetence, you're actually unlikely to do the work to get better. And once you crack this concept in your mind and seek incompetence, you not only do the work, but you love the work because as you're doing the new hard thing, there's the satisfaction of both productivity and the knowledge that a moment ago you weren't any good at this thing you're incompetent at, but you will get better. And that's really embracing a growth mindset attitude. You don't fear incompetence anymore because it is the path to brilliance. When Mr. Beast started his YouTube channel, he was terrible. No one watched his first video or his hundredth video. It took two years of him posting twice a week before he started to get any views at all. He also had to accept that he wasn't an especially interesting, funny, or good-looking guy, and he had no majorly impressive qualities as far as he was aware. But he did have the willingness to just do hard work and push himself in extreme ways. With every video he made, he just endeavored to make something better than the last one. And by improving one little thing at a time with each video and spent all of his waking hours obsessing over everything on YouTube, he ended up developing incredible taste for what works on YouTube and that's what helped him carve his channel into the biggest channel on YouTube. The self-confessed, incompetent, non-expert made himself so good at producing content that works. He now has a company worth over a billion dollars and has been given his own TV show to produce this year by seeking and embracing his incompetence. So now we've covered the fact that we should be defaulting to surrender and admitting we don't know things and in fact searching for our own incompetence. But then what about the times that we do have the answer? Surely that is the time for our brilliance to come out. Well, sometimes actually the opposite is true and it's better to hide our effort and our amazingness. The best form of persuasion is when we persuade ourselves. We all know that deep inside, the feeling to do something of our own volition is much more satisfying and likely to happen than because someone told us to do it. We like to make up our own minds freely without being pushed around. We don't want someone to make up our minds for us, even if they are brilliant. We want to arrive at our own aha moment. And an aha moment is actually more than just a bright idea. 
it's a chemical reaction and a rewiring inside your brain as this new piece of knowledge builds itself into your brain's circuitry. It's the moment when we see something that we have not seen before and we make new decisions on what we think is some new information. Sometimes we have our own aha moment. We want to give that brilliant idea to someone else. We want to persuade them of what we understand so they can understand it too. Whether that is to buy something off us, to agree with our point of view in an argument, or maybe just make some different decisions on life that might help them health-wise or anything. Seth Godin says there are three ways to block someone else from having their own aha moment from the knowledge that we are sharing with them. Firstly, when we are entranced by our own insights and we perhaps get too excited by our communication tools that we're using and we can let things like facts and figures get in the way of a good story. We make a wonderfully long PowerPoint of why everything is brilliant but actually fail to explain the point at all. The other way is sometimes we're afraid of our power and we bury the useful information so deeply that we go out of our way to not let someone think of us as trying to influence them at all and thus we actually fail to influence them at all because they can't even see what we're trying to tell them. And then thirdly, we can sometimes do the opposite. We can be so forthcoming, we just directly tell them what to think, that the true essence of the story we're telling disappears and is replaced with just a harsh, forceful, you should believe this message. And that creates a wall of self-esteem in the other person and it blocks them from letting our facts from getting through to them because they expect that they need to defend themselves from our bias. And they're essentially in danger mode. This person is trying to influence my thinking. I want to think my own thoughts. I'm going to cancel out anything this person says. And yet I'll do that even if you're saying something useful. Persuasion, as I've said, works best when it is self-persuasion. When we don't try to have all the answers for someone, but we can share some ideas that might have merit without trying to be tied to them ourselves. And especially when we appear open to changing our own minds ourselves, it looks like we might be making up our minds with them. In the world of startups, they'll say that if you want advice, ask for investment. But if you want investment, ask for advice. If you try to persuade an investor to give you money directly, they'll have their defenses up. Yet, when you are open to their opinions of how to build a better business, they might also be open to seeing how the business could do well and why it might be a worthwhile investment for them. It becomes their own idea as they help you with the business. Now, if you are an entrepreneur with a brilliant idea, you know that it's great. You've had the aha moment. But an investor needs the idea to invest in your company. You've had the aha moment. You know that if the investor gives you the money, they're going to make some money. It's brilliant. And of course, you want to just convince them that they should give you their money so they can make a return. It's a wonderful thing for you to persuade them of. But an investor needs the idea to invest in your company to be their own idea, not your idea forced upon them. So we see here that just like the defaulting to surrender when we might be unsure or seeking incompetence to get better, even if we have the knowledge and the facts that something is true, we need someone else to come up with their own idea instead of taking the opportunity to show them how great we are and that we know everything. So that was a short episode on three ways in life that being humble will meaningfully improve your success compared to the average human controlled by their ego and desire to look brilliant. I'm sorry if you couldn't tell what I was saying. I may have had a very bad voice today and about every one minute I was just having a coughing fit. If you like deep voices, then this episode was for you. If you have any friends that are really into deep sounding voices, do share this episode with them. It is how the podcast grows. If you thought the episode was truly amazing, then leave me a good review. If not, then wait for the show to improve. Any feedback or comments always appreciated. And you can email me at growthmindsetpodcast at gmail.com. And until then, life is too short to be running around trying to prove to everyone how brilliant you are, when instead you can be doing the opposite and having a much better impact. So tone down your desire to impress and ramp up your humility. And remember to be kind to yourself. And whilst you're at it, be kind to someone else too.